exponential graphs can be seen easily from an equation because the x is in the air. So I always say it's an exponential graph. An exponential. Right? An exponential graph. So the x is in the air, our basic equation would look like this with x as a power. All right? k this time is a little bit different from what k has been in the past, but we still have a's and b's that are going to be the same. But this graph has a particular pattern to it, and it's one of the probably most useful graphs as far as um, biology and geography and things like that are concerned, because it explains or it models exponential growth or exponential decay. So things like population growth and anything that's related to population growth. So um, rising temperatures, rising water, rising loss of animals, all of those sort of things can be modelled usually quite easily with an exponential graph. So it's a good one to know. It has a pattern, and the pattern is that the basic graph always goes through one. Can anybody tell me why that, it, that always goes through one? Good, well done. Anything to the power of zero, so when x is equal to zero, anything has the value of one. So that means this will always go through one. There is a way that could change, and that's by having a multiplier. But we're not going to deal with a multiplier this year. All right? But this particular situation, always through one. It also can never be negative. So doesn't matter what that power is, it is always going to be a positive. So we have an asymptote. Therefore, that can never go through the x-axis in our basic form. All right? So we've got two points, two things so far to help us draw our graph. The next thing is that anything to the power of 1 is what? The number. the number. So this k tells us that when x is equal to 1, y will be equal to k, wherever k happens to be. So I'm just going to pop it there for now. All right? So with those two points and the asymptote, that gives us enough information to draw the graph. That's all you actually have to be able to draw to get it right. So, it looks like this. All right? It exponentially grows. And you will have heard this word heaps with COVID, right? The growth of COVID is exponential. All right? And they're saying when it first started, it did. It's, it went up like that for you. Um, as time went, the cases didn't just double. They tripled and then they quadrupled and then they times by 10 and then before you knew it was all out of hand. We've got it a bit under control at the moment and then it's sort of fluttering around way up high up here somewhere, hopefully coming down sometime. But this exponential growth was what panicked everybody. The fact that before you knew it, you could get completely out of control. There's an old, um, an old problem with the two to the power. Mm -hmm. So if you say to your parents, okay, I will, um, for my pocket money, I will take two cents on the first day and double it every day after that for a month. Are you up for that or would you like to give me 50 bucks? And if your parents are not at all mathematically inclined, they'll go, oh, two, 10 cents, two cents, that's pretty cool. So four cents, 10 cents, I'm never going to get 50 bucks. But of course, because it's doubling every time, it's the same as that binomial um, thing that goes 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So up to 32 cents on the fifth day, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1000. Before you know it, I think it's about day 15, you go past 50 bucks. I don't know what day it is, actually it might be even 12 or something. All right, so this particular graph mimics that. So if we've got a uh, general case, y equals um, k x minus a up in the air plus b. All right, those are our normal a's and b's, but what are they moving? So they move this point here. They move the origin in this case. Because we need to know where that asymptote is because it tells us how our graph is drawn. So if we look at this one, 
x do 2? The power of x plus 1 minus 2. What's a? 1. Good. B? And k? All right. So you're really good at finding these things now, and you're not getting caught out by the a is negative 1, which is great. So now we need to draw that. And what we're doing is we're saying negative 1, negative 2. That negative 2 is our dotted line. And that line there is where we're going to put 1 above. All right? So this line has our dotted line. And on this line here, we're going to go 1 up from here. And that point is on the graph. Always 1 up. Now we need to go over 1 and find out this point. So over 1 and up 2. It's going to go through there. The next point would be 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So it would go through at 4. The next point would be 8. The next point would be 16. All right? But we actually just need to make sure we hit those two. It would be good if you hit some more after that. But those two are the ones that are in. Now, that seems really easy. Problem is there's four different things that can happen here. This is when k is a positive. When k is a negative, what do we know happens? Okay. But first, before it inverts under here, we would have to find out these parts here. All right? So if we had y equals, I'll put it there, y equals negative 2x plus 1 minus 2, that's still our picture. But instead this time, because it's negative 2, we're going to come down 1 here and down 2 here. So it is just a reflection in the graph. Will you ever have two in the same graph? No. All right. So those are the two different ones with a positive and negative. But there's two more. The next one has a half. And I'm going to keep going with the same one just so that you have the same picture. Now, what this means is, again, we've got our asymptote at negative 2. Oh, green, please. Negative 2, all right? And again, we've got that important point at negative 1. Okay, but this time still, it's a positive, so it's here, 1 up. So far, no different. The problem is now, when we go one out, we have to go to where? A half. It's here. So what's it going to look like? Both good suggestions, but no, it's going to look like this. All right? And if it had been a negative a half... it would have been down here. All right, so finding the equation. What do we need to look for to find the equation, do you think? Why? Yes, yes, because what's that going to tell us? Kind of the y intercept. We need to find the asymptote. The asymptote is going to tell us B, and where that point is one up from the asymptote is going to tell us where A is. All right? So, Okay, if this is the graph, where do you think the asymptote's going to be? Here? Graphs can't go through asymptotes. 
here. All right, so that's at about one. So we've got B equal to one. All right, at what point is A one up or one down from that dotted line? When X equals negative one, right? Here, that's the one down point that we're trying to find. So therefore, A is negative one. Now K, okay. so we have to go one this way and two down, all right? So K is going to be negative two. So our graph is going to be negative two, X plus one, minus one, all right? If we had been given a point, we could use that point to find it. So if we had not had this, and we had been told only that at one the value was negative three, we could use that point to help us to solve it. We just substitute in, again, the same way we always have, y equals k, x minus one, plus one, sorry, plus one, so we've got negative three equals one to the power, no, k to the power of one plus one plus one. So we take that away on the other side. Negative four equals k to the power of two k squared can't be a negative. That's interesting. Oh, it's zero. So that doesn't make a difference anyway. Anyway, solving for K. What are the features here? Good. They're not very much different than we've always had. We've got the asymptote and X, Y intercept. Good at that. And just well done. That's a tick for you. All right. No. So we're going to practice that today. Um, 